Welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome to the teardown video of the Craftsman Premium Grade Ratchet Set. Before you, we have the complete set, starting with the half inch. We'll go ahead and zoom in just to kind of get a look at what we're working with here. So each one of these ratchets has an 84 tooth gear made in the USA with the Craftsman branding on it. Let's take a look. So each half inch is going to have the serial number of 25482. Uh, this number series right here just has to do with what plant it's made at and the date that it was made. Here's the 3 eighths. Right here we've got a serial number of 2548. The serial numbers that I'm reading to are consistent amongst every single one of these for their respective sizes. And then we have the quarter inch. Serial number 25479. Why the 3 eighths has one last digit? I have no clue, <laughs> but they're all like that. I have a few sets of these. So we're gonna keep this fairly light and keep it fairly informal. If you hear things in the background, don't mind. You might, you might hear a refrigerator starting on or a TV show in the background or something like that. So let's go ahead and start tearing into one of these. I'm only going to do the half inch for my own sanity's sake and for the respect of time. I just want you to get a general idea of how to approach this. Some of these ratchets are easier to work on than others. So, and another caveat I'm going to go ahead and throw out here is that I've already cleaned each one of these ratchets. If it needed a, a refurbishment, a cleaning, a lubrication, that's already been done. I'm just going to go through the motions to show you how to take it apart. We're going to analyze some of the pieces and then I'll show you the basics of what you need to do to maintain it. And then what you do from there is realistically up to you. So let's get started here. We'll get these two guys put to the side because they're just going to be on the sidelines. The star of the show is going to be the half inch. For here and evermore, what I like to do, since I'm doing this on my wife's table and I don't want to get my butt kicked, is I'm just going to set this, since I'm going to be applying some downward pressure, put a piece of shop towel underneath my ratchet on top of this surgical chuck. <laughs> You're probably not going to be able to buy that at a hardware store. but So what you'll do is you want to grab a hex key. This one is approximately three millimeters. So you just go ahead and get her in there. I don't know, I grabbed the wrong one. Derp. Like Bill O'Reilly said, not that I support uh, <laughs> his show or anything like that, but I love to hear the quote, we're doing it live, we're doing it live. So we're just going for it, <laughs> mistakes and all. So there we go. We're starting to get the little security screw out. When you first tear into these, you'll probably see some blue Loctite on each one of these from the factory. You, you may elect to do that yourself. I elected not to do it just for ease of access and my own sanity if I wanted to quick access the inside of these things. Actually, you know what? Before we release that final screw, just so we know what this thing's supposed to work like and sound like before we take it apart. So this one, a very smooth action. I mean, we can get, since it's 84 tooth, we can barely move the socket stud. So we'll know we'll have a successful repositioning and lubrication of everything when we get this action back. And for these, with this Paul and Gear set, it can be a little bit of a challenge, and we'll see why that's the case in just a second. We'll get this off. Come on. Let's go ahead and zoom in once. Take a look at what we can see. 
in terms of what's readable. So we have, it says keep clean and oiled. And also on the top part of the head, it says replaced, damaged, or worn parts up at the tippy top here. Okay, here we go. All right, so as you can see, just like I said, I've already well lubricated everything. Well, let's put the gear right there. We'll go ahead and get the Paul right there. And these are a little unique in that in order to get this apart, this is where we'll go ahead and grab our pick, just so we can coax the pin out. And why do we want to coax the pin out? Well, because the way the selector switch is designed, it is designed to have just enough clearance to get out. So as you can see, I applied some thumb pressure here. It's hanging on by itself. I'm gonna go ahead and with a slight twisting motion, twist it out, outward. And there you go. So we've disassembled the ratchet. We'll go ahead and inspect some of the pieces. <laughs> we'll grab our pliers just for simplicity's sake, get this thing out of there. Okay. So, the way that this thing is broken down is pretty simple. So we've got the selector component, which has a little black gasket. We'll use a demonstrative pick pointer right here. So there is the black gasket right there. Here we have some machining, some pretty fine machining on the selector. This hole right here represents the position that this spring-loaded pin will seat. So we've got that. Here's the pawl full of lubricant. And let me see. Is I, th I believe this is the area that I was talking about where it states the revision number for the particular pull. Let's see if I can't get that cleared up. Negative. Okay. Now it's on the opposite side. So it may be a little bit hard to see. Let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit. Come on, camera. There we go. So this, from my knowledge and experience, this is revision A. You'll see it says 84. Where's my little handy dandy pick? We've got 84 right there and then half. From the ones that I've seen, this section right here will be a smaller font, and then either here or in this hole, it'll actually have a big letter B. And in this one, that is what we're seeing here. Is it's kind of covered with lube, but it's a B. So that means that this is a later revision of the Paul because the earlier iterations were having some issues in regards to how they mated with the gear and it didn't f effectively work as well as it could have or should have. So we have a very, very fine toothed pawl that mates with the gear. You can see just for me gently rubbing this pick on it. I have not counted how many teeth are on the pawl, but like any ratchet, depending upon which side you have it selected, it's going to work 
based on that so it'll use this half of the side of the teeth to engage one side and the other half to engage the other side of the, the gear. We've got here's the gear there are no special special numerations or letters or numbers on it no quick release so and then there's a gasket that's right here that mates up against the plate in order to try and minimize contamination that may seep into your ratchet. And then here's what the internal dynamics look like. So we've got some precision machining done in order to accomplish the seating of all of the internal components. So this one's pretty straightforward. Very, very easy to maintain. I think that in terms of difficulty, I'm gonna give this a one. <laughs> in terms of tearing it down. Uh, now putting it back together and having it all work, that's a completely different story. I've had some difficulties with certain sizes and the like in order to get this back together and functioning and we will see why in just a second. So I'm not going to lubricate, bother to lubricate any of this again. It's already well lubricated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our selector and we're not going to just, whoa, we're not just going to slam it in. We're going to take that little lip we've got here and gently seat it in. That way we're not da damaging the selector, the, the housing of the ratchet here, and the gasket. So I'll put it at the 12 o'clock position. We'll take our pin, we'll slide it in. Let me go ahead and grab my little probe here, a little pick. Try to maximize my my positioning, my yield, very good. Take our gear, <laughs> put it there, and what you want to do is you want to take your paw and seat it in such a way that the size, the part, the part that we actually had the writing on it with the size and the revision, that side goes up. You'll see another side that has a little like divot right here. That side goes down. So what you want to do is you can take your pawl and the way that this thing is kind of naturally migrated all on its own is that it's kind of gone to one of the sides. That's more than fine. Uh, inside of the pawl here, there's like a little hump in this inside of this little like spider fang spot. You'll just want to make sure that you kind of slide it as far over as you can. Get in there, you bastard. Apply some finger pressure down against that spring, grab your gear, gently slide it in, and voila. So far, so good, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. So let's check for action. So far it seems to be okay. Oop, let me get out of the way there so you can see what's going on. Got too much shadow effect here. Okay, so far we're, we're doing okay. Pretty basic. Sometimes I'm a, I've been a little reluctant with these because as I've reassembled them, especially those revision A's, that you can, unless you get that freaking pawl in there just right, you have a high probability of getting gear lock and your ratchet will not function properly after a few turns. And that was the problem with those revision A pawls was that they, unless you seated them perfectly or it didn't matter how good you were, they were just Give up the ghost on your ratchet. Actually, you know what? I think I, I noticed that these screws seem to work a little bit better on their respective sides. I think that this one went over here. Realistically, it shouldn't be like that, but I think that the threading 
is a little there we go yeah the pitch of the thread is kind of incorrect on one side versus the other and the screw is kind of mated to that all right so a one out of ten in terms of difficulty assuming that your pull is decent and assuming that we got her back together again let's give her a little wipe see how we did ah oh, success nice so we know we don't have any extra pieces left over. She works okay. We done did her right. <laughs> now just go ahead and wipe off the extra lubricant that you may have accidentally got on your ratchet. And you're done. But assuming that I hadn't had this lubricated already, when I had received these, they were all pretty dry. And that was a complaint that I had read over and over and over again in regards to these premium grade ratchets that some people when they would actually use them professionally would be that they had some premature failures because one it didn't come with any lubrication out of the gate and two the users didn't think hmm you know maybe I should check my internals and lubrication to see what's going on I guess you could call it a fault of both user and producer but they come bone dry what you'll do, because assuming that you're buying this new or even used, these are only a couple years old at maximum, you want to grab some lubricant. I like to use Super Lube. This is why you're wearing the gloves, besides messing with the internals, is just get a little bit, you know, wipe it on your gears, and it's literally that easy. There, there isn't anything mysterious about how you should lubricate this thing. You'll want to lubricate all surfaces that are going to come into contact with any kind of moving parts or have any kind of friction or wear. So there you have it. We have the Craftsman Premium Grade Ratchet Teardown Video. Mission accomplished.